Again, welcome to Statistics DSRT 734 class. Again, we continue with the non-parametric test. In our previous lectures, we went through the sign test. In these lectures, we will go through the Wilkinson test. So our main objective is to use the Wilkinson sign rank test to determine if two dependent samples are selected from populations having the same distribution. And second, we're going to use the Wilkinson rank sum test to determine if two independent samples are selected from population, again, having the same distributions. So we know one of the disadvantage of the sign test, uh, which we went through the previous lectures, uh, one of the disadvantage of a sign test, again, we discussed in the previous lectures, is that it wastes information, it wasted information, because the sign test merely counts the number of positive or negative signs in a pair differences experiment and also ignores the magnitude of the differences. But the Wilkinson sign test is a parametric technique which can be used to evaluate a pair difference experiment. This test is designed to detect again populations whose centers are shifted to the right or to the left of each other. But as with the sign test, no distributional assumption is required. However, the pairs of data must have been selected in a random function, and it must be possible to run the differences. This is, again, the main condition of a sign test. So again, the disadvantage of a sign test is that it wastes information because the sign test merely counts the number of positive or negative signs in a pair difference experiment and ignore the magnitudes of the differences. The advantage of Wilkinson test is that we are not going to ignore the magnitude of the differences. So an advantage of a Wilkinson sign test is that it does not ignore the magnitudes of the differences but it does not take the magnitude directly into account. Instead, the ranks of the data are analysis. So again, that's the main difference between the sign test and also our new lectures, which is the Wilkinson sign rank test, the advantage and disadvantage. Again, Wilkinson sign rank test will not ignore the magnitude of our data as compared with the scientists. So here we see again the Wilkinson sign rank test is a non-parametric test that can be used to determine whether two dependent samples were selected from population having the same distribution. And unlike the sign test, it will consider the magnitude or size of the data entries. This is the advantage again with the Wilkinson sign rank test. Our previous sign test, uh, the magnitude again is ignored. So let's go through the steps of performing the Wilkinson sign rank test. Uh, in words, again, this is also hypothesis testing. It's hypothesis testing. So first, we need to state our claim. So we need to identify the known and also the alternative hypothesis. So we need to state the HO and HE. As we said in our previous lectures, always HO will be our claim and HA will go against the claim. Then we need to specify the level of significance, which is identify the alpha, the level of significance. Always is given to us. Then we need to determine the sample size n, which is the number of pairs of data for which the difference is not zero. Remember in the scientists, the same concept. When the difference of the two pair data set is zero, which means 
the sample is the same, we ignore it. And when one is less than the other, the left is less than the right, or let's say the first one is less than the second one, then we assign negative. If the first one is greater than the second one, we assign positive. The same concept here, we determine the sample size, which is the number of pairs of the data for which the difference again is not zero. Then after that, we determine the critical value. So the critical value, we're going to use the critical value for Wisconsin sign test table. And we have a special table for again, we call this sign test. In order to use the table again, we need the alpha value, the level of significance. So after we get our critical value, we can now know the boundary between where we have to reject the HO or accept the HO. So next, we need to calculate the test statistics. So we complete a table using the headers listed at the right. So our headers will be, we have two samples. So we have sample one, sample two, the differences of sample one and sample two, we have a different color. Now, if the value is negative, if we look for the absolute value, we know, for example, if the difference is two, the absolute value will be two. If the difference is negative two, the absolute value will be two. So first we have the sample, the first column, sample one, second column, sample two, the third column will be the difference of sample one, sample two values. Then the result we get, we find the absolute value of it, of the difference. Then we rank it. Then we assign the sign rank. So the year we say the sign rank takes on the same sign as its corresponding difference. So again, complete the table using the header listed at the right. Then we find the sum of the positive ranks and then the sum of the negative runs. The same step as we did in the sign test. In the sign test, again, we have two groups. We find the differences. If the difference is zero, we ignore it. If it's positive value, we count positive. If it's negative value, we increase negative. So next, we select the smaller of the absolute values of the same sums. Then step six, we make a decision to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is the HO. So here we say if our WS, which is our test statistics, is less than or equal to the critical value, then we are going to reject HO. Otherwise, we fail to reject HO. Then we interpret the decision in the context of the original claim. So I think the example here may help us. So this is an example of a recursive sign rank test. As we said earlier, the recursive sign rank test uh, is normally used again to test if uh, two uh, data, two samples came from the same population distribution, if the distribution of the populations are the same. So here, let's see our example here. A sports psychologist believes that listening to music affects the length of athletics workout sections. Again, listening to music affects the length of uh, athletics workout sessions. The length of times in minutes of 10 athletics workout sessions while listening to music and why not listen to music. So this is again, dependent sample dependent sample or dependent data because we are using the same athletics. Now, if it's, we have athletics A in group A, listen to music, group B didn't listen to music, they are different people, then that will be a dependent sample. So when we read the question again, and the reason why I want us to understand dependent sample because again, Wisconsin sign rank test, we test it on two dependent, two dependent variables, not two independent, two dependent uh, from the objective. So here we see a sports psychologist believe that listening to music affects the length of athletics workout section. The length of time in minutes of 10 athletics workout sections. Why listen to music and why not listen to music? 
So it's the same group of athletics, 10 of them. So this is again dependent sample as shown in the table. The alpha level is given to us to be 0 0.05. Now, can we support the sports psychologist claim? The sports psychology claim is the beginning of the sentences here, the question. The sports psychologists believe that listening to music affect the length of athletics workout session. So does it affect or does not affect? So these are the sessions. We have 10 athletics. Again, the same person. When he's listening to music, it's 45 minutes. Without music, it's 38. The next athletics listen to music 38. Without listening to music, 40. Up to again. So by looking at this question, we can use the Wikossi sign rank test. The reason why two things, this is two samples pair. Not only that, but they also dependent. Most important thing is two dependent samples. So let's go step by step as we went through the steps already. First, we need to state our claim. So we have our HO and HA. Uh, HO, we say there's no difference in the length of the athletics workout section. HAs go against it. So there's a difference in the length of the athletics workout sections. Alpha is given to us to be 0 0.05. So we have the alpha value 0 0.05. And it's a two tail test. The reason why it's a two tail test, we can see difference or no difference. So it's equal or not equal. There's no greater or less, either there's no difference or there's difference. So this means it's a two tail test. And then the sample size, and we have 10 athletes from the same dependent, the same sample. They are listening to music and they are not listening to. So here we say the difference between each data pair is not zero, 10. Uh, so here we know that this is again, the table we are going to use. Uh, to find a critical value for Wisconsin sign rank test. Again, that's the name of the table, critical values for the Wisconsin sign rank test. And the answer here will be eight. The reason why, again, let's go back. We saw the alpha level is 0 0.05. It's a two tier test. N is 10. Because when we see our data, there's no zero. Let's, let's go back to the data first. Then we look at the result. So when we look at the data here, there's no any data set that the value is zero. So it's the same 10 athletics with music, how long it takes, with that music, how long it takes. And the time, the time for all the 10 athletics is the same. Uh, I mean, the time, there's no differences. There's always, I mean, there's a differences. There's no the same two values. So for example, the first athlete is 45, 38, second 38, 40, 28, 33, 39. So all the minutes that we get, the length of the sessions with music and without music, there's a difference in time. We don't have the same time. What I mean we don't have the same time? Let's say the last athletics with music was 44. With that music was also 44. So if that's the case, the sample will be nine, not 10. So remember in the steps we said, if the difference is zero, we don't count it. So here we count everything because the differences of all the 10 athletes is not is zero, so we count it. So that's why again, again the first step we say this, our HA and HA, we have the alpha, and the reason why we have 10, there's the differences between each data pair is not zero. So now, since I know the N to be 10, so I'll go to the N is 10. And also I know the alpha is 0 0.05, two tail, two tail, not one tail, two tail. So two tail, 0 0.05, and N, that will give me eight. So this means my critical value is eight. Again, I'll go through this example one more time from beginning. Uh, and also, let's go through the steps one more time. 
So here we are performing the Wisconsin sign rank test. So the first step again is to state our claim, identify the new and also the alternative hypothesis. And that's what we did here, HO and HA. The next step is to specify the level of significance, which is always given to us, the alpha. Now we need to determine the sample size n, which is the number of pairs of data for which the difference is not zero. So this is what I was trying to explain. Here we have 10 athletics. The difference of the uh, session, the training session with listening to music and without listening to music, the difference of all of them is not zero. So that's why we use n equal to 10 because all of them. So if we know this, we know the alpha level and we know the sample size n where the difference of the values is not zero, then we can go to the Wisconsin uh, table to determine the critical value. Then we determine the critical value. So after we determine the critical value, we now we calculate for the test statistics, which is obvious. In order to do this, we have to set our table. We have sample one as our first column, sample two, then we find the differences of sample one, sample two, then we find the absolute value from the differences. Then we rank and then we assign rank it. So we complete the table using the headers listed at the right. Then we can find the sum of the positive ranks and the sum of the negative ranks. Then we select the smaller of the absolute values of the sums. From there, we can make our decision. So we make a decision. Either we are going to reject or we are going to fail to reject the HO. Then we are going to interpret the decision in the context of the original claim. So this is the example again. So here we say again, a sports psychologist believe that listening to music affects the length of athletics workout session. The length of time in minutes of 10 athletics workout session why listen to music and why not listen to music are shown in the table below. And at alpha 0 0.05, now can you support the sports psychologist, psychologist claim? Here yeah, we have with music, this is the time they spend in the section, workout section. Without music, they give us the time in minutes they spend in their workout session. Now, when we look at all the 10 athletics, there's no difference that equal to zero. So our N equal to 10, the whole 10 of them. The ones that equal to zero, we ignore it. So let's say if we have 44 and 44 at the last, we are going to remove it. So our N will be nine. So we start with stating our claims. We know here we are looking for the differences in length of athletics workout session. So HO said is, there's no difference. HA said there's a difference. Alpha is already given to be 0 0.05 and N is 10 because the difference between each data pair is not zero. Then from there, we go to the critical values for which we call C sign rank test. Now we look for N is 10. We have two tail. Alpha is 0 0.05, so it will be this column here. And the value is eight because N is 10 on the row 10, and then two tails 0 0.05 is eight. So if we know this, the next is to cal calculate the, st the test that it is. We know the test that it is, they say we should arrange our table. So we have our data set is about section, workout section with music. So these are the 10 values, which is in minutes for the athletics. Then with that music, this is it. So with these two, we can find our differences. So the difference between 45 and 38 is seven. 38 minus 40 is negative two. 28 minus 33, negative five. 39 minus 36 is three. 41 minus 42 is minus one, all the way to the end. So last is 44 minus 39, which is nine. So now we're going to find the absolute value of the differences. So everything will be positive now, the same value. So negative one will be positive one. 
negative five will be positive five. So when we get this data now, we can do our ranking now. So we look for the lowest. Uh, so the lowest is one, so first one, one. The next diff absolute value smallest is two, three. We don't have no four, but we have five. Since we have two fives, we use 4.5, 4.5. Then we move to six, six is six. Then seven, maybe we have two sevens. The reason why I saw 7.5, it means we have two seven. So we have one seven here, one seven here. So both of them will be 7.5, 7.5. Then we have eight. Then we have nine and then we finish. So we rank them. Then now we go to the next step, which will be our sign rank. Uh, here we have 7.57. 7. Uh, remember the difference is negative, so negative two. Here also we have negative 4.5 because the two negative. We have three, negative one, six, eight and nine, 7.5, everything is positive, so 7.5, then positive 4.5, and then positive 10. So this is our sign rank. This is why the test is called we call it sign rank test. So we are, the first two columns will be given to us because we have a pair of dependent samples. We find the differences, then we find the absolute value, then we rank it, we rank it from the lowest to the first. Then we sign rank it. Sign rank it will depends if we have a negative or positive in the, the difference. Negative or positive. So you can see here we have one, one, which is one. Rank is one, is the low, lowest one. But it was the original was negative one. So we assign negative one as our sign rank. So from here we can find our test statistics. So the test statistics will be the sum of the negative ranks. So when we look, we have to take the lowest and we can see that the positive is too many, one, two, three, four, five, more than six. So uh, when we look at the steps, we take, it can be positive or no, uh, negative for the lowest items. So the lowest is negative. We have three negative, the highest is positive. We have seven positive. So we find the sum of the lowest sign of positive or negative. And the count shows that negative is only three, so it's lowest, positive is seven. So we will have negative two plus negative 4.5 plus negative one. And that's what we have here, negative two plus negative one plus negative 4.5, which gives us negative 7.5. So this is our test statistics. Remember our critical value was eight from the table. So the sum of the, the sum of the positive ranks is 47.5. We had all the values of the signs, sign one. Then we have our WS now, which is our test statistics. We said it will be the smaller of the absolute value of these two sums. So it will be 7.5. So if we know 7.5 is our test statistics, we can make our decision that we are going to reject HO. The reason why we reject HO, because the critical value is greater than the, the test statistics. Critical value was eight. The sign was, uh, the test statistics was 7.5. So we have to reject HO. It will go to the reject region. So we said at 5% level of significance, you have enough evidence to support the claim that music makes a difference in the length of athletics workers section. And I think we can also see it in the, we can also see it in the table given to us, the two samples. So next we move to the, we call it rank sum test. And also we call it rank sum test is also a non-parametric test that can be used to determine whether two independent samples were selected from population having the same distribution. So it's the same as a recursive sign rank test. 
here we say rank sum test, previous one sum rank test. Is we are using it for the same purpose, but the steps are a little bit different. So here we say the requirement for recursive rank sum test is that the sample size of both samples must be at least 10. And also N1 represent the size of the smaller sample and N2 represent the size of the larger sample. So when calculating the sum of the ranks R, use the ranks for the smaller of the two samples. And the same concept as in the previous. So this is the step. So give it two independent samples. The test statistic Z for the we call say rank sum test is Z equal to R minus mu R over standard deviation R. And R is the sum of the ranks for the smaller sample. The mu R will give me N1 times N1 plus N2 plus one over two. And standard deviation for R will be N1 times N2, N1 plus N2 plus one, all divided by two S. So the difference we, can, we are seeing here is that the formulas, is, the formulas are different, but again, the steps are the same. So in our previous, we use the critical value to find the recursive rank table, uh, find the critical value for the, uh, but here we are, you, we are going to use the standard normal table because we find the Z. So our test statistics is using the standard normal table we're looking for Z. So let's follow the steps. Again, this is for we call say rank sum test. It's different from we call say sum, sum rank test. It's, diff it's totally it's different method. So first we need to set our claim HO and HA. Then we get our alpha, identify the level of significance. Then we, if I know the alpha, I can determine the critical value. Then we determine the sample size. Then we find the sum of the ranks for the smaller sample. Then we list the combined data and ascend the order. Rank the combining data and had the sum of the ones for the smaller sample. Again, the best way to do this is solving the example. So we will see example in a few seconds. So we calculate the test statistics, then we make our decision whether to accept or reject HO. So this is a very good example to explain the detail. Here we say we have a table show the earnings in thousands of dollars of a random sample of 10 male and 12 female pharmaceutical sales representatives. At alpha equal to 0 0.10, can you conclude that there's a difference between the males and females earnings? So we can see the male earnings and the female earnings. So the first thing we state our HO and HA. HO is, there's no difference between the males and also the females and HA said there's a difference between the males and also the female and and alpha is given to us to be 0 0.10. Since there's no difference, there's difference, it should be a two-way test. So we were able to find with our alpha value, we were able to find our Z. Remember our Z, here we have to use one over one minus alpha over two Z. So when you are looking for a critical value and you are using a Z table, all you need is only the alpha because it will be Z one minus alpha over two. So you plug in the alpha one minus 0 0.10 over two, whatever value you get, you go to the Z table and look for it. And here, since we are doing two tail tests, we divide the alpha into two, 0 .0, 0 0.05 to the left, 0 0.05 to the right. So we have negative and positive center will be our zero. So now we find our critical value. We want to do our test statistics, but in order to do the test statistics, we saw the formula. We need the value of R, we need the value of mu R, we need the value of standard deviation R. 
So in order to do this, we construct a table that shows the combined data in ascending order. And ascending order means from the lowest to the highest. So we look at our data, you can see that male, female, everything is missed because we are looking the lowest value in the data was 57 and that start with the female. We rank it as one. The next value is 58, that was a male. We rank as number two. What, what I'm doing here, let's go back to the, I'm com we are combining the whole data here, male and female together. The lowest value is female, 57. The next is male, 58. And the next will be, let's see if we are 59, if no 59, then we look at 60, 61, and we keep going. So that's what we do. We combine both female and male, and we rank everything. Sometimes we may have 0.5. As we saw earlier, 0.5 means we have the same value twice. So you can see 57 was 1, 58 was 2, 64 is only 1, female was 3, 65, female again, 4. But 66, we have 1 and 2. So instead of saying 66, 5, another 66, so we say 5.5 each. Then we go to 67, it's only 1. So Seven, then eight, nine, 73 is two, so 10.5, 10.5. 74 is only one, so 12. Then 13, 14, 78 is two, 15.5, 15.5. We skip 16, so the next will be 70. You can see that anytime we have 0. 0.5, we skip the next, because it's supposed to be five and six, but we say 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5. So next will be seven. We go here nine, the next should be 10, 11, but since they are the same, we have 10.5, 10.5, so the next should be 12. So we rank it up to the end of it. The highest value was 97, which is male, and it's only one value, so it's 22. So if we know this, we are going to, because the smaller sample is the sample of males, uh, most of the smaller sample is the sample of males, R is the sample of the male rankings. So we had all the male. So we start with the male 2, 5.5, 2 plus 5.5, plus 12, plus 13, plus 15.5, plus 17, plus 19.5, plus 21, plus 22. And that's what we had here, 21, 22, 19.5. So that will give us the R value. Now, we didn't add a female because it's large sample. We say because the smaller sample is the sample of males, R is the sum of the male ranking. Remember this, when you look at the original data, which I didn't mention, but when you reach, look, you can see that male have two less sample. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So male have 10 samples, values, while female has 12. So that's what they are telling us because the smaller sample is the sample of male. The R will be the sum of all the male rankings. So all the rankings for the male, and all the sets. So next we look for N1. N1 will be our first sample for the male, which is 10. N2 will be 12 then we can find MR and standard deviation R because we are going to use N1 N2 in the formula. So M mu R will be N1, parenthesis N1 plus N2 plus one divided by two. And that will give us 15, 115, 115. Then we find the standard deviation, which is the square root of N1 times N2, then N1 plus N2 plus N3 in parenthesis over 12. We plug in the value, we do our arithmetic operation here, we get 15.17. Now we know the mu r, we know the standard deviation r or sigma r, and also we know the package r. So if that is the case, we can find the test statistics. So z will give me r minus mu r over standard deviation r, which will give me 1.52. Now, when we look at the rejection region, 1.52 fall in the brown section, which means accept. So we say our decision is failed to reject HO. The rejection region will be the blue area. 
that's the rejection for HO. So here we say at the 10% level of significance, you cannot conclude that there is a difference between the males and female animals. So this will be the conclusion of our lectures on using the reconciling sign rank test to determine if two dependent samples are selected from population having the same distribution. Also, that's the recursive sign rank test. Also, we use the recursive rank sum test to determine if two independent samples are selected from population having the same distribution. So again, wish everybody uh, the best. And in our next lectures, we continue with the non-parametric test. So far, we have we went through three different tests. We went through the sign test. We went through the real causing sign rank test. Then we went through the real causing rank sum test. So again, wish everybody the best. Thank you. <laughs>